Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do my full review on two knives, okay? Two similar knives in terms of build quality and build construction, but two vastly different knives in terms of how I feel about them, right? I call these rapid reviews. They're not usually rapid, but we'll get through it. I got my LaCroix here, lime flavored or key lime flavored. And the knives we're going to be talking about today are the Migoron AM8 Flix and the Bade Modern Designs Stunner, okay? And, uh, yeah, one of these I really like, one of these I don't like so much. So let's talk about the one I don't like so much first, and then we can dive into the one I really like. So this Migoron here, uh, again, is the AM8 Flix, and... As far as I understand, AM8 is a sub-brand of Migoron, uh, but it's kind of the same build and build quality and materials as their other knives. Excuse me, so it's a little odd that they went with the new name change. Uh, this was loaned in to me by White Mountain Knives. So big shout out to White Mountain Knives. Uh, use my code LEFTY10 at checkout for 10% off your order and free shipping in the United States. I really appreciate White Mountain Knives for sending loaners like this. It saves me a lot of time, guys. Uh, sorry, a lot of money. And uh, really helps the channel out so you guys get to see content on knives you're looking at and I don't have to spend a fortune on them, right? These are available right now on White Mountain Knives for $195.88. They also have uh, an open box one. I don't know how much that is. I can check for you. Uh, that one, let's try this, Flix. Uh, the open box is $183.99, so you're only saving like 12 bucks. So it must just be somebody returned it, not there's anything wrong with it. And that's probably what's going to happen with this one when I send it back. They'll sell it open box, you'll save like 15 bucks or something. And I've quite literally barely used this, uh, just for review, right? Um... Uh, so, this has uh, titanium scales. It is technically, I guess, a bolster lock um, because you can see part of the frame lock here and then it's hidden under a scale. So I'd call it a bolster lock. It's a bit of a high bolster lock. A lot of the frame is showing, but that's okay. Uh, it has this really cool milling on the titanium, kind of like the uh, TW Price Dawn, just a little bit of a darker color there. Then you have this marbled carbon fiber scale and you have this uh, bronze pivot collar or brass pivot collar with blue anodized pivot. Really cool construction. Uh, if you look at it, you have a front flipper and then you have M390 steel here. Uh, and you do have a, this is a machined satin. It kind of looks, it's like a high polish machine satin. So it kind of has the feel of, or the look sort of of a hand satin at times. Uh, but it is a machine satin on the flats as well. Uh, hor horizontal on the flats, vertical on the uh, bevel. And then you have a fuller over here on this side. And here's your AM8 logo. Uh, you can see the unboxing for a better look at all this stuff. Um, and we are on caged ball bearings, of course. Uh, it looks like brass caged, yep. 5 millimeter 1 16th, it looks like. You have a titanium backspacer and you have a titanium clip with one of the things that bothers me more than anything, a tappy tap tap tappy clip. So, 195.88 on the website. Let's run through the specs because I have them. Uh, you are looking at overall length. Ow. Sorry, I have this. My skin gets really dry in the winter and it cracks. And uh, one of the places it does that is between the webbing of my fingers and right here i just have this absolutely vicious like cut now my finger is literally tearing and uh, it really hurts when i spread my finger out and when you do a front flip well guess what you're spreading that finger a little bit so let's do it right-handed sorry for that story uh overall length 8.3 inches blade length 3.5 inches Blade thickness, 0.12 inches. Blade materials, M390. You have a plain edge. It is a satin finish. Drop point, 
59 to 61 HRC. Uh, handle length, so close, 4.8 inches. Black marbled carbon fiber and titanium handle. Front flipper says thumb stud opener, but that's wrong. It's a fuller opener. Tip up pocket clip, right hand only, 4.8 ounces. It is designed by Sam Liu or Lau. He runs Megaron. He's their sole designer right now, and it's manufactured in China. Megaron is a OEM and knife company. Uh, they're very new to the market, uh, which is pretty cool. So they've had some knives I haven't been interested in, and then they've had a couple I have been interested in. And uh, I'd say from the Pagos, which was their first model, they've come a long way. Um, the Kirix and the Karaki are awesome knives. This one is a good knife, but it has some flaws that bug me, okay? So let's get into that real quick, because, you know, it's a rapid review. It's only been five or ten minutes already. Overall, I think the design aesthetic is pretty cool. It kind of gives me vibes of a Vero Synapse in a way. Uh, just the way it's kind of like a sort of rectangular shape. That one has a little more of like a, a, a contoured curved feel to it. These are contoured, but I mean the design overall. And then that's a flipper back here, not a front flipper. Although I think you could front flip the Synapse somehow, if I recall correctly. Anyway, gives me that vibe. And that's a good thing. Obviously has the pocket on one side like a Vero does. It's smaller than a Vero pocket. And the blade sits a little deeper into the scale than a Vero does. Uh, but overall, I think it's an interesting aesthetic. It's not for me. It's kind of kind of reminds me of a fish stick. <laughs> I don't know if, that, if that's weird or if that's an insult or a compliment. But you tell me, doesn't it kind of look like a fish stick your mom would have given you like when you were a kid? Anyway, that's what it reminds me of. And then when it's open, which is hard for me, by the way, which is the main reason I don't like this knife, um, it looks pretty cool. You got a nice drop point, possibly a clip point, um, definitely a flat grind. It, it, you know, it looks fine. It's a good looking knife. A lot of people are loving this thing. Um, ergonomics. So you have this grip back here, which is very comfortable. I mean, it's pretty much neutral, like one long swell, but a very shallow one. Feels very comfortable in hand, left-handed. That clip is out of the way. Then you have a choil, and it's even more comfortable in the choil. Right-handed, same thing. That clip, very flat, low, no sharp points or anything. Feels really good in hand. And again, up here feels really good as well. Uh, the jipping on the flipper tab is horrendous when we're talking about ergonomics here. And when we get to action, uh, we'll talk about that some more. Uh, cutting. I did not do much cutting with this one, guys. Uh, I think I opened a package, cut a shipping label, and uh, a piece of paper in the unboxing. That's literally it. I did not carry it much because of the big issue I'm going to tell you about. Uh, and I hate a tappy clip. Yes, I could have bent it, but no, I wouldn't because it's not mine. So uh, I just didn't carry it all that much, to be honest. Um, but... In terms of the cutting, it's comfortable in hand for cutting. You can get, you know, very good cuts going. Uh, in terms of the shipping label, I can get a good pinch grip. I can't get the best control. Um, much like I said in my last review of the Beg Lighter XL, you just have a lot of knife kind of in your, in your wrist here. And trying to get precision on that tip is hard. I just didn't end up cutting very straight on the shipping labels but it works, right? And then of course, packages and stuff, you just slice, you're all good to go. Um, but I don't have extensive experience with the cutting on this one, guys. Uh, carry, again, I carried it a couple times, back left pocket, it wasn't the end of the world. This clip is tappy, but it, it works pretty well. Uh, it goes in pocket, it comes out of pocket. Um, the retention's not the best, uh, but it's definitely serviceable. Um, and it's not a hot spot in any way. I kind of like the way the clip looks. It's kind of a mirror image of the knife. So you have a big fish stick and a little fish stick. <laughs> um, so that is a carry a sounds. Oh, it's also for its size. I thought it would be heavier and it's really not. I think it said 4.8 ounces. 
I think that's a pretty good weight for the size of the knife. I don't know why. Um, if I compare it to, say, I'm carrying my uh, Mini Tempest today, which this knife is sort of um, deceptive, I guess is the term I would want to use. It's a three and a half inch blade, but in your hand, it sort of just feels like a three and a quarter inch blade. It feels like a much smaller knife in your hand in a good way, right? I'm guessing these are about the same size. Yeah, they're almost identical in size. Is there more handle? Sorry, I can't see. Is there more handle? Yeah, there's a little more handle on the Megaron, but the same amount of blade. So the Mini Tempest is doing a much better job on blade to handle ratio. Um, so compared to this, this is heavy. Uh, but I think in general, it feels fine. So um, yeah, I think that's my point. Sounds. Yeah, so the sounds are not very good. Um, the sounds I do hear are sort of bad sounds. Like, do you hear like a th uh, like a, a dull thud when it opens? I know it's kind of a dull thud. And then when it close, when you disengage it, you can hear the bearings just rattling. I don't know if you hear that like I do. And then it just closes, which is fine, whatever. Uh, I would give this like a three or a four in sounds. It kind of throws me off uh, the dull thud and the, and the bearings. And otherwise, it's not terrible or anything. Um, but yeah, not great. So action. Here is my problem. The detent on this knife is perfect. They have nailed the detent on this knife, right? Uh, on the reverse flick, it flies out of there. Perfect detent. Now, my biggest problem with this knife, the reason that I don't like this knife is the jimping on the front flipper. So if you look at the jimping on that front flipper, hopefully you can see it here. It's just not grippy enough. I can... Like, I slip over it so often, and maybe it, it's coupled with the detent. Maybe the detent's too strong. To me, I think the detent is perfect. But I just tend to slip right over that flipper tab or not get it all the way or whatever. Um, and then I'm, like, doing this thing, and it just it doesn't work. And I tend to have sweaty fingers, and they just slip right over right over this thing. Um, now, right now, I seem to be getting it pretty good, um, but the whole time I had this knife, I struggled. I was just slipping right over that, um, so if you have sweaty hands or you work in a moist environment or a humid environment, I do not think this knife is for you. Um, if you have dry hands, a dry climate, that kind of stuff, I think it's fine. I think they need to dial this chipping up a little bit, though. It's just really smooth, in my opinion. Um, and then uh, in terms of the pocket, it works. But I wish it was a little bit bigger, a little bit, you know, I wish it had more access uh, and was a little bit bigger, just taller or something. The blade stuck out a little more. Um, and it, I just think it would be better. And then, obviously, I wish it was on both sides. You know, so lefties could have fun too because with this bolster lock, it's actually set up where I would land in a good spot. I wouldn't be locking the knife up and I'd be able to flick it. So they kind of just screwed us there. Um, so overall, just not for me on this one. The build quality is excellent, guys. They did a great job, I think. Uh, it's dead nut centered. Um, again, the bearings aren't great. You can hear them in there, but, you know, maybe a cleaning or uh, swapping the bearings. That's that's pretty much an easy fix for me. Um, but otherwise, the, the build quality is outstanding. They're doing a great job over there at Megaron. So 
Um, I got to give them credit on that. So that is the Migron AM8 Flex. Okay, this is available at White Mountain Knives right now if you do want to get one. Now, the knife that I love is the Bade Modern Designs Stunner. And I don't have stats on this one because their website just shows sold out and it doesn't have a product listing that I can find. Um, this one was loaned in by my good buddy Brent, aka Backpack B. Shout out to Brent. I'm trying to convince him to sell me this knife because I want it. I really want this knife. This knife makes me want to work with Kubi, who uh, did the OEM work on this for Bade Modern Designs. Um, that's how good it is. It makes me want to reach out to Kubi and do a project with them. Um, it's excellent. So, who is Bade Modern Designs? Well, it seems to be a new sort of boutique brand. I don't know if they're from the U.S. I feel like they're overseas, but I'm about to find out. I clicked on the About page, and here we go. Uh, aiming for the best since 2015. Bade Modern Designs is more than a brand. It is filled with passion and enthusiasm for all kind of EDC gear. Bade Modern Designs is the place where thoughts and dreams become reality. All the products and concept designs are dedicated to make, to made for per perfection, and Bade Modern Designs will keep bringing the most unique pieces of hardware for EDC world for the future as it did for the past. This is really sort of weird. Um, there's no other information. Contact, let's see what the contact is like. Admin at BadeModernDesigns.com. Every thought, idea, and feedback is very important. Please feel free to tell what you think about our products. We will reply. We will reply you as soon as possible. So here's my theory. I'm thinking this is a Chinese company or uh, just overseas in some way because the English is really like you could tell or they just have uh, spelling issues. Uh, let's redefine quality. I don't know. Just the way they said those things seemed off to me. Um, then there's just some like... Um, there is some reviews... And here is their Instagram, and it just has the, the website again. So, yeah, they're not telling us where they're from. They're not telling us who, what, where. So they could be uh, Russian. They could be, you know, they could be uh, Chinese, whatever. It doesn't matter. I just, I'm trying to get some information here, and it's hard. So I did see they have a sort of, they have these uh, tools. Like, they make tools, which is cool. Um, and anyway, the stunner came in three colors, it looks like. A blue, so you have this uh, stonewashed titanium with a bead blasted blade. Dude, this hollow grind is epic. It's one of the things that sets this knife off. Um, they're carbon fiber inlays with what feels, it has the look of like a golf ball. Has those little divots like a golf ball. Uh, it kind of feels cool, but it kind of makes it look cheaper i do want to say that um titanium and then you could get blue so all blue accents you could get all green accents or you could get all purple accents uh, i think i would get blue or purple personally and probably blue so uh still trying to get brent to sell me this it's in m390 steel and the tight the hardware is all titanium and it starts at 179 Dollars. This was a pre-order campaign in uh, the summer. I had no clue it existed. And uh, I'm pissed about it because I really like this knife. That price is incredible, though, by the way. Um, and again, I believe it's made by Kubi. It's milled out heavily. Has excellent... Uh, every, I mean, it's really good. So let's get into it. I apologize for the long intro of the knife, but I wanted to learn more. And we didn't, but that's fine. <laughs> Um, aesthetically, it's not my thing. That's the first thing I thought when I saw it on, I think Neve's Knives is the first person I saw who had one. Uh, it's not my aesthetic. It has this sort of drop pointy sheep's foot blade that I've seen before. Like, um, the Kubi Royal has this type of blade shape, sort of. 
I, I like it better on that one. Overall, I like the aesthetic better. It's, it's just something about the over. It's kind of a little bit rounded for me. I'm not usually into the rounded knives. I don't know. It kind of gives it that fish look, which I'm not into the fish knives. That's basically the best way for me to put that dumbass statement. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, but it has grown on me since I got it in hand. So I do really like the aesthetic now. Uh, the ergonomics are outstanding. Uh, you have this uh, choil right here and then neutral and then this diagonal right here, right? Uh, large glove size hand just fits perfect back here. Just literally melts back here. You have a little bit of jimping up here on the spine, which is pretty smooth and honestly makes no difference whatsoever because I go right past it. Then you have this absolutely generous forward finger choil, and holy cow, it feels like a glove in this grip. Um, just excellent. Seriously, the ergonomics are spectacular when you climb up into this grip. And then, of course, for shipping labels and such, you climb sort of into that choil right here, and then you have that low tip, which is perfect for cutting shipping labels. An absolute dream to cut with this knife, guys. Uh, carry. It is excellent. This pocket clip goes very, very deep. I mean, you have a little bit of the knife sticking out right here, but I mean, for most people, not a bother at all. The clip works really good. Um, it goes in pocket, comes out of pocket. I carried this, I've only had this like four days and I wanna move it on. Um, so I carried it every day for those four days and I absolutely loved it. I mean, it was a pleasure to carry it tucked into the back left pocket. It's not heavy because it's milled out like crazy in there. Uh, you guys can see my disassembly video of this knife to see the internals. Um, yeah, the cutting guys, like I said, shipping labels, all that stuff. But what I want to emphasize in this video is this hollow grind. You probably can't see it, but it has a hollow grind. Just so good. It feels really deep. It starts almost at the spine. It's just, it's what I want in a hollow grind, guys. This is what I want my knives to be like, to have hollow grinds like this. Um, I'm really impressed, and I'm so glad I got to check this knife out. Sell it to me. Um, anyway, cutting, mm, excellent. Man, I'm really talking about this knife, so hang on. Sounds. The sounds. Do you hear the sounds? They're so good, guys. This is a 8, 9 out of 10 all day. It's a freaking home run in terms of the sound. Oh. Ba Bam! And part of that is the detent. Let's get into action, baby. This detent is perfect. Oh, it just flies out of there with the thumb stud. Ba -ba! I mean, it literally wants to break down doors. It's so good. It pops so nice, but it's not, like, stiff. It doesn't hurt. It's not like, ooh, I fidgeted with this knife for, you know, five minutes and my thumb hurt. No, it's literally perfect. And then you have a flipper tap. Just as good. That is so hard to get right, to have both uh, deployments, me deployments methods. To have both deployment methods be on point is very hard, guys. It really is. And they have nailed it on this one. I love it. The flipper tab is absolutely perfect. The jimping on there, the way it wraps around, coupled with the detent. Oh, it's just so good. Push button. Perfect. I mean, it's literally a dream, guys. Thumb studs are beautifully designed. Beautifully executed. They're tall enough. They have enough grip and everything. And you never miss them. Never miss them. Reverse slick is excellent. Now, one of the only downsides to this knife, maybe the only one, is the lefty reverse flick. Uh, it's not... You have to be on the clip. 
You know, that's the only downside. If I, like, my natural position would be to land like this, right here. And I can't flick it because of the detent and I'm on the lock bar. So I have to back up onto the clip. And then I can flick it. That's the only downside I found to this knife, guys. I absolutely love this thing. On the close, drops to your nail. Smooth shake down. I mean, it's not a guillotine. Ooh, maybe it is. Yeah. I think it is a guillotine. Holy cow. I think it just broke in, guys. Oh. I feel a little bit of play. Okay, so there is one other negative to this knife. It wants to walk. The pivot wants to walk. That's for sure. I Loctited both when I did the disassembly. Uh, maybe I didn't let it sit long enough. Or maybe it just has such a good detent and it hammers out that it just, the, you know, it can't hold it. <laughs> I don't know. But I do feel a little bit of play now. So I'm going to have to um, Loctite it again and see. I'll let it sit and then I'll ship it. And it should be fine because it will be like two days. Uh, to let the Loctite cure. But uh, even before that, it was almost drop shut. So, and it still is dead nut centered. So, uh, those are the two downsides, left-handed reverse flick and uh, the pivot walk. So you really want to put, you want to put a decent amount of Loctite in there. And I had to do it on both pivot screws. Yeah, I can move them. Yeah, okay. Yep, I got to redo that. I think I just tightened it. Yep. I just tightened it with my finger. Yikes. Um, so yeah, I need more Loctite in there. That's the downside. You do have a crown spine, which is awesome. So guys, overall, I freaking love this knife. Uh, the hollow grind, the action, uh, the detent, the, um, the cool finishes. I like that they did purple, green, blue. Like it's just different, right? Overall, that's all awesome. It looks like the price point was really good. So um, yeah, I really like the stunner guys, uh, Bade modern design. They said they are doing another run. I talked to them. So keep your eye out on their Instagram. And then you have the Megaron flicks, AM eight flicks and uh, shout out to white mountain eyes for loaning this one in again. You can use my code lefty 10 at checkout and big shout out to my buddy, Brent backpack B for loaning in the Bade Modern Designs Stunner. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this ridiculously long rapid review. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. I really love you all, and I will catch you later.